milkman that just happened to be a zombie came to deliver milk to this house and <laughs> killed everybody in it. <laughs> we thought, hey, that sounds stupid and funny. We had all afternoon, let's go do it. Early to mid 80s, and video was kind of a new thing. Every movie we made back then was some sort of a sword or a gun or something blowing up and ketchup flying all over the place. <laughs> I'm amazed no one ended up blind or deaf or missing a finger. The accident with Greg was not a good thing. I can't even imagine where, you know, how many hits on YouTube that would have been. It was quite idiotic. Some kid standing there with his shirt, you know, acting like he was a zombie, and all of a sudden his arm completely blows off. Dad, I don't think I'm ready to. Damn it! Oh, goodness! I must have burnt his toes! Making movies was fun. It was work, but it was fun. It's only so long you can play asteroids or tank or pong. Why did we make these movies? I think that we made them because we were sort of bored and this was something that interested us. We were creating our own reality and instead of some make-believe world or whatever, we were making it on a movie and it generally made people laugh. John is my twin brother. We did a lot of things together. John would spend hours and hours uh, with these little clay figures and, and through you know stop start animation he would he would make these little sequences of clay figures doing things and at some point that morphed into us actually participating in 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 movie making. With most of these movies, uh, my involvement on the front end was very little, uh, and, and John and maybe Greg and Steven would, would cook up some idea for a movie and they inevitably would cast me in some kind of goofy, cagey role. Even though he may not necessarily have been involved with the, the front end or the planning stages of these, these movies that we made, we'd bring him in as an actor and he'd often just steal the show. I, my first impression of Steve was that he was a cool guy, but he was also kind of a little off and nerdy like, like most of us were. Obviously a very smart guy, Steven, you could always tell. Even <laughs> though Steven went to a different school, he and I were hanging out all the time. And it really was just a matter of time before the two of us were making films together. Greg appeared one day, I think, with John and uh, this old beat-up car full of, like, jack-in-the-box rappers. Greg is one of the most talented people I've ever met. He, ta he taught himself how to draw. He taught himself how to play the drums. He taught himself how to surf. Greg certainly had his moments. He would kind of have these little fits of, of energy. <laughs> We're all at that Whataburger in Memorial City. We're like, hey, let's make a movie this afternoon. And we're sitting there, what should we make it about? And just out of left field, I think it might have been me even that said, how about if it's a, a guy delivering milk, but he's a zombie? I don't remember ever seeing a lot of detailed scripts. It was, we were all pretty much winging it. It was a joke to call it a script. It was like a one, I think one page piece of notebook paper that we wrote on both sides. And it was sort of just an outline of the movie. No, when this scene, I'm this is gonna happen, you do that, you say this, and we would go ahead and film it. I'm just getting pretty sick and tired of it. Why don't you go out and get a job? I had a home video camera, the kind you put on your shoulder and look through the thing and da da da. This dinosaur in terms of a camera equipment, it was cutting edge at the time, but by today's standards, it was ridiculous. It didn't have a tape in it. Those were way too expensive. It had a long cable on it that you had to attach to a VCR. The batteries for the VCR never worked. The VCRs always had to be plugged into the wall. There was someone behind the camera carrying those boxes and dragging the extension cord along with it. We did not have editing equipment, so what that meant was you had to shoot the film in sequence. And if this scene was messed up, you had to go back, rewind the tape back, pause at the end of the last scene, and refilm it. It was very problematic because it, it created choppiness. If you didn't pause it exactly right, it, it created some static in there. Let's face it, in this day and age, you could shoot a, a movie on an iPhone and edit it on a Macintosh, and, and visually, the, it would look better than, than anything we did on VHS back then. Sorry, Dad. My makeup basically consisted, I think, of putting talcum powder in my hair, 
uh, some type of white makeup on my face to make myself look pasty. And then I smeared some black makeup around to look like I hadn't shaved and it was sort of gross. And then I put a pillow in my shirt. The inspiration, I think, was a, a collection of dislike of, of authority figures growing up as teenagers. Gym coaches or, or sports people or neighbors and they were bossy hypocritical men who would like to go yell at teenagers and tell them they were stupid. Now if you don't hurry up and get a job I think I'm just gonna kick you out. You know you're over 18. I think it's pretty safe to say he was probably the better actor of all of us if, if you had to point to somebody. He intellectualized his characters a little bit more than the rest of us for lack of a better term. She was sort of like the, the washed up, worn out housewife who just didn't care and went through life like a robot. One thing people ask me is, um, what's up with this guy who's always dressed up as a woman? What's his deal? John wanted to get the movies made, so he said, all right, all right, no one wants to be the woman, I'll be the woman. That is utterly disgusting! That is so foul it makes me want to vomit! It was kind of like the Monty Python guys. We saw them and they would dress up as women. So I just kind of emulated that. Oh, Billy! What have I done? Billy, Willie, what have I done? It was just my, my thing. It was my shtick. Bubba probably epitomized all of us a little bit because I think all of us probably did better academically than most. Maybe soon I'll be elected as the scientist of the year. I think he was also an anti-hero because in all horror movies there, there's always something that, that you like about the main character who's fighting the monster. Instead, our, our hero fighting the monster was this super nerd who screamed like a girl when he fought. Jared's character is probably the funniest guy in the whole movie, I think. Something about Jared's character was so weird that... <laughs> and he played him so spastic. Jared just made him up entirely, and we really had no idea what he was going to do, but the end result was incredible. I probably had, you know, 15 minutes of prep. Uh, here's your part, and here's what you're going to do, and here's what you're going to say, and, and I would just go along with it. Maul and maul. Maybe I did my hair a different way, but, but that's about it. Grab a pair of nerdy glasses. Dang, these glasses keep falling off. Was it Roy? <laughs> Why was it Roy? <laughs> Who's Roy? I take credit for the, the peeling skin. We had figured out to put Elmer's glue on my face and let it dry and then peel that and that looked a lot cooler. I, someone in Hollywood should use that. I just kind of went, uh, just moaned the whole time. I didn't say anything. I think I said, milkman. We had a close-up of me breaking the bottle, and then I slashed in front of the camera. Martha laid down, and we put a line of ketchup on her face, like her face got slashed up. Martha, who's at the door? He's like, damn it, Martha, where are you? Or something like that, and that's when I snuck in. He turned around and started screaming, so I, I stabbed him, and that's, that was one of the cooler effects. We had one of the ketchup bottles in his gut with a little opening somehow in the front where he started squeezing real hard and the ketchup started spraying. I think we used ketchup because that was all we had. Heinz was going away from those glass bottles and they had just come out with the squeeze bottle. So, I mean, even if you weren't making a movie, you were spraying that <laughs> ketchup on something. I don't know why. We thought it was cool. We had the squeeze ketchup and you can spray it out and it looked like blood. It's right here, it's in the fridge, it's free. Let's just use that instead of trying to figure out how to make real fake blood. Bubba and the Undead Milkman have one of the most classic and unusual fight scenes in the history of movie making. I don't know how we came up with it. I don't know if we planned it out or if it was ad lib. Most people didn't catch that line forever until I, I kept pointing it out when he'd scream, gotta get the machete. <laughs> get the machete! Everyone's like, he says that? And I go, yeah, listen, it's crazy. The, the machete line, I think that just came out of nowhere. A, a lot of people felt like that's where Bubba's character really developed. Or somebody wanted for Greg's hand to get chopped off. Uh, that was an important component of the scene. Bubba's screaming and shrieking and acting like a little little girl the entire time. The other important component of the scene was for Bubba to somehow find himself lying on the ground with his glasses off, uh, basically uh, impending death. Oh, no. 
Badger, Chuck Dorcas. We had to end it somehow, so we had Chuck Dorcas come in on the hood of a car. And that's when John does just another one of our stunts that no one really gave any thought to safety. Came in flying, too, and jumped off and kicks the undead milkman into the uh, wall and unloads his machine gun on me. So that was the, that was the big graphic ending. It seemed like every movie we had a different special effect we wanted to try out. We were all, you know, more than willing to be the guinea pigs for any of these things. We are trying to capture uh, the illusion that the undead milk band's be being shot in the chest by a machine gun. Wouldn't that be cool if it went pop, 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 you know, like it was going down, shooting, blowing up down me. Somebody got their hands on some gunpowder. It was much easier to get back then. And we found out how to make these, um, little explosive packets go off and when you lit it it made this kind of nice pop explosion it was like a it was like a big firecracker at least three explosives on greg's chest maybe five and we just thought okay these are just going to be little pops like normal now we took a lot of safety precautions we got a piece of cardboard and we put it in greg's chest to protect him from the explosion so <laughs> i backed up against the wall and kind of went back like this right when you know when they're about to say action and John set off the, the first one went off and it just blew there was sort of a pause and then Greg started screaming and went running out of the smoke with this trail of wires and and battery and every other thing so I remember that John's dad had a pool in the back and I thought I'm on fire so I'm gonna run back there so Greg jumped in there and he was yelling about his arm and we didn't know what had happened to him finally calmed down and got out and I was shaking because it, it hurt bad. The cardboard actually worked. The cardboard protection on his chest protected his chest from when the, the bomb went off. The problem was that the, the hot explosive stuff got trapped under his shirt, went to the side of the cardboard, then went down his arm. My shirt was all burned all up here, totally burned off, the, and my arm was black and red and black all over under here. The hair under my arm was all gone. Went down his shirt sleeve and severely burned his arm, gave him third degree burns, and it was not good. I wasn't sure how bad it was, but it looked pretty nasty and, and it hurt like hell. So we uh, calmly drove to the hospital. The doctor was like, wow, what happened to you? I mean, it, it looked like I had been shot with a musket or something. By the time we told him, finished what, how I had gotten hurt, this Poor guy was like, what are you doing? You know, you guys are idiots. You know, there was no sympathy whatsoever. I was the one setting off the explosives. And for some reason, after I detonated that first one, I stopped. I don't know if it was the loud boom that it made or what, but I stopped. And I was this close to setting off the other two or three or whatever it was. And that's what I often think about is what would have happened if I would have detonated the other explosives? I don't know, you know, <laughs> might have killed him, I don't know. The thing that, that's more upsetting than the explosion was that the damn camera, if you're on pause for more than like two minutes or something, they, they stop because the tape gets too tight and it'll break or tear or something. Before the explosion, all that, no one noticed that the tape in the machine had stopped already, so we didn't even film the damn thing. <laughs> I was like, God. We'd never caught that scene on tape. Uh, and we, we have a movie now that, that, that isn't finished. John put on this pretty cruddy looking mask to cover up his face. He tried to do his best to look like the milkman. He then put his hand over his face. We ended up throwing, I think, ketchup soaked toilet paper wads at him, you know, and, it, and you could totally see him coming in from the screen. That, that was the special effects we decided to do that day after we blew up Greg. It was terrible. It was, it was a disappointing ending. It would have been much cooler if, if you'd seen the undead milkman blow up <laughs> the way I did, the way I actually did. I recognized at some point that all horror movies had to have music. We had the, the ending which was screwed up by where we blew up Greg, but there's this perfect transition from the undead milkman getting blown away to this bizarre music that, that I think Greg made up on his own. And it's perfect. It's such a strange transition at the end of the movie.
The Wisconsin Weed Eater Massacre was a movie that I was not involved in. I was the idiot yard man. It was a different time. It was a time of really over-the-top idiotic stereotypes and whatnot. They seemed funny at the time. Nowadays, I'm sure somebody would probably be offended by them. Ted Perinsky and Smith was some kind of Starsky and Hutch duo that ran around uh, doing some kind of crime fighting. I have no memory of making that movie, but I've seen it, and, and I know I'm in it. <laughs> One of our movies that we made was a James Bond spoof, and in that I kind of expanded my acting horizons. Instead of a woman, um, I played a male stripper. It's time for the College Dropout Show! The College Dropout Show was kind of our version of Monty Python's Flying Circus, and it consisted of skits. For instance, we had the Toxic Zombie. <laughs> Johnny Napalm, subtitled Escape from Cabrinka. Is this face? Hang a bell? Ha! Ah, ding, 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 ding. Ah. Ah! You bastard, I'm gonna get you! Ah. <laughs> the Damien's. <laughs> The Damien's was a movie that we made up on the spot. Strangely, the characters in the Damien's it matched up with those in the Undead Milkman, except they were much more cleaner. I was, was again the son, and Stephen was again the dad, and John again was the mom. swing was meant for me, but instead you chopped off the head of our beloved son, Malcolm. You do it for our money? Yes? Oh. Yes? Oh. Huh. No. Guess what? I don't oh. have any money. <laughs> I'm broke. Now you're going to jail and you killed your only son for nothing. <laughs> there was no direct benefit to making these movies. We never made any money off of them. Um, we probably lost a lot of self-esteem for making them. It was something free and easy to do. It was something different. It was something fun. I had a great time doing it. I think everyone else did too. And nothing was funnier in the world than when you were done and you could all sit back and watch the final thing. I mean, I still laugh at some of those stupid things nowadays. My family members always thought I was a little crazy. <laughs> After I got married, they asked my wife if she knew about the movies. And she said yes, and they were like, why did you marry him? Don't you contradict me, woman! I think I found out for the first time in my life that you can become so immersed in your work that the work doesn't seem like work anymore. Looking back, it's a lot of stuff that they do nowadays. It's just, it wasn't really well done, and the camera itself wasn't that great, but it was applaudable that we tried, you know? <laughs> it was trying to be crafting. We were trying to craft a movie, you could say. In making these movies, we learned a lot about how to get organized, how to you know, make something happen, um, how to work together, how to coordinate activities. Uh, I do you know, advertising now, so I, and I shoot TV commercials all the time, you know, and me and the director work together on them and set up shots and everything like that. And it comes back to a lot of the stuff we did before, you know, with Undead Moon Man. Now, it seems like there's zombie stuff all over the TV and the movies everywhere. I like to think we uh, inspired somebody. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs>